Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of our Savior's birth. Welcome all in um, virtual land. You know, pull up a seat and let's get ready to celebrate our Savior. We're going to start off with this inspirational video. Christmas comes not in the hurrying and the scurrying to get more done, nor is it found in the purchasing of gifts. We find real joy when we make the Savior the focus of the season. as we sing the song together. Hark the herald angels sing, 
righteousness, light and light till all he brings, written with healing in his wings. Body laid in glory, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give the second
Amen. Amen. One more round of applause for our singers for bringing us in on this wonderful Sunday morning. Amen. Thank you all. Good morning and welcome to Valley Brooks Christmas Celebration. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Pop Pop. We want to give a special welcome to all of our first time viewers and visitors. We are happy that you have chosen to worship with us here at Valley Brook. Those at home may click on the link below to access our first time visitor card. Please take a few minutes to complete it to help us pray for you as well as notify you of future Valley Brook events. You may also find this form on our streaming page after the service. Streaming the Sunday service. We have three options for viewing our Sunday service virtually. You can go to the website and click onto the streaming tab. You can connect directly to the stream via vbccstream.com or you can go to our Facebook page at VBCC Online to connect. Praise reports, prayer requests, and sick and shut-in reports. If you have any information about a member who has become ill or if you would like others to pray for you, please complete a prayer request e-card located under the Pastor's Corner tab or on the streaming tab on our website, and we will be happy to lift you up in prayer. Also, join us every Wednesday at 8, 8, 8, mm, not 8 a.m., oh no, <laughs> 8 o'clock p.m. for our Power Hour of Prayer. The phone number and access code are listed on our website's homepage and in today's bulletin. Power Hour of Prayer, continuing December, part of the weekly Power Hour of Prayer that takes place every Wednesday. We will, we will focus specifically on two ministries per month for prayer. Anyone who is part of the future ministry or supportive of it is invited to join us. On December 6th, we focused on the marriage ministry. On December 20th, the outreach ministry will be featured. Amen. You may find the call and information for the hour of prayer included in today's bulletin and on our website's homepage. Offering for your convenience, you may contribute on our website through our giving tab or mail your, no your donation to our office address as listed on the back of the bulletin. You may also see today's bulletin for new ways to donate. Access to our bulletin. Please reference this morning's bulletin for our scripture reading and more complete information about the Valley Brook happenings. You may access the bulletin by clicking on the streaming tab and click on the link labeled Virtual Bulletin. Cameras. For those of you all who are not already aware, all regular Sunday services are both live streamed and recorded as well. There are two video cameras in the sanctuary, both of which are occasionally used to capture reactions of the congregation. For those who wish not to be seen on camera, it is recommended that you be seated on the left side of the sanctuary. The video technicians have been instructed to avoid showing that area. And now let's receive Brother Dave Perrin, who will lead us in today's scripture reading and offertory prayer. Well, earlier this week, um, I got a call from Grace uh, asking me if I would be willing to read the scripture today. And of course, you can never turn down a request from Grace. <laughs> But she threw in an extra bonus for me is that I could pick the scripture, which, which I did today. And since we were approaching Christmas, I decided to go back and read the Christmas story in Luke, the first several chapters there. And out of that, I picked this uh, section that I'm going to read for you in just a minute. But just to set the stage for you, I, I suppose most of you know this, but Luke opens with the story of the birth of John the Baptist. And the fact that Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth were getting up in years, they hadn't been able to have children. Zachariah was a priest, had duty in the temple, and an angel appeared to him prophesying that he was going to have a son who was going to pave the way for the Messiah and to name him John. And about six months after that, the angel Gabriel appeared to a young woman in Nazareth by the name of Mary, who was a virgin betrothed to Joseph, saying that she was going to be the son, she was going to be the mother <laughs> of, the, of the Messiah. And uh, not, not surprisingly, it came sort of a surprise to her, but her response was, whatever the Lord sort of needs me to do, 
I will do that. And this is the next, this is where the passage that I'm going to read picks up. It says, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted her relative Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her room, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is in the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Amen. Now, I had probably heard this story or read this passage a hundred times. Um, I've had a number of years to be able to do that. And, but for some reason, it, it actually had an, emo I had an emotional response to it. And I was trying to figure out you know, why is that? You know, I know the story uh, very well. And yet when I read this, I had a, I, I really had a response and I decided and thought about it, that the reason is for me, I saw what God did with and for ordinary people yeah. like myself, yeah. okay? Um, most of us are ordinary people living ordinary lives and yet we have an extraordinary God that comes and wants to be partners with us. Um, and, and, and I just really had an emotional response to that. Anyway, um, please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that you offer us your amazing grace, that you come looking for us and want to be with us and share our lives on our good days, on our not so good days, when we are celebration, and when we are have our doubts, and all those, you are with us, and we are forever grateful. And during this Christmas season, may we strengthen those feelings and our relationship with you and share our blessings with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to I'm going to be reading this poem to you. Go tell it on the mountain or shout it from the roof. This baby born in Bethlehem brings all of us good news. He is the hope of heaven, the promised son of man. He is king of kings, lord of lords, and the great I am. His virgin birth, miraculous, was far, far more than that. This savior born and stable low split all of time in half. The world is marked by his birth and by his life indeed. His grace and mercy are a gift. He supplies all that we need. As we celebrate the infant and honor his unfailing love, let's not forget the purpose for which he left his home above. He is far more than a baby. He's a savior, Lord, and King. From silent night to Golgotha's hill, his life is why we sing. So bow before the manger, but seek out the rugged cross. Be blessed to know Christ Jesus, 
Prince of Peace and Son of God. May you and yours be merry. Tis good to note his birth. May you know him in his fullness now and when not bound to earth. Thank you so much, Kasha. That was beautiful. We are so um, blessed to celebrate our Savior's birth. And what is becoming uh, a tradition for us here is to have the Mayo family um, bring us some Christmas cheer. And so without further ado, we're going to have the Mayo family come for us. Hello everyone, it's nice seeing you all. Let us adore Him. 
kneel down before Him, worship and adore Him.
Amen. Hallelujah. I heard you clap for him again, but let's give him a rousing applause. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am, I am so excited about just the, the selection of songs that we were able to participate in this morning. It fits in so well with this morning's message. And more important, it fits in with what this season is all about. It's about celebrating. It's about celebrating the Lord and Savior who came to earth and took on flesh and became a person like us and walked among us full of grace and full of truth. Just want to make a quick announcement. This Friday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock is our Christmas Vesper service. So uh, we would love to have you here. We will have a couple of uh, testimonies, people sharing the difference that Jesus has made in their life. We'll sing Christmas carols together, and uh, we will read the scriptures together. So it'll be a, a Christmas Eve celebration, and you're all welcome. It's from 7 to 8 this Friday. So uh, save the date. Um, also, I just want to say welcome to my lovely daughter and her husband from South Carolina, along with their kids. They made the trek. They left at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon and came to our home at a balmy 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, so it is great to have them here. Um, why don't you stand up and give your neighbor a warm Valley Brook greeting and remain standing for opening prayer. Thank you. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. We'll give him all the glory. 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 He cries, the Lord. Lord, we are thrilled thrilled to be a part of your family. We thank you for allowing us the blessing of gathering here to celebrate you as part of your forever family. We recognize, Lord, and we thank you for inviting us to be a part of that everlasting celebration that will take place when Jesus Christ is revealed and his people are taken up to be with him and thus we will forever be with the Lord. Lord, it is a temporary condition that we are in right now. It is a temporary situation that we are worshiping you and loving you and knowing you by faith. We know one day we will see you face to face the same Jesus that we've been singing about, the same Jesus that we've been lifting our hands to one day, the same Jesus that we read about in your word, that same Jesus we will see face to face. You will know us by name. You will give us a new name. And we thank you that you will be our King and our Lord for all of eternity. 
So we thank you for this opportunity we have this Sunday to celebrate you by faith. We ask that your Holy Spirit would work in each of our hearts as we read your word, as we look at what your apostles have had to say about who you are and whom we have come to know you to be. So we thank you and we praise you. We commend the time to you now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I, I really, I, I want to go back to what I was saying about the Christmas carols and how wonderful it is to be able to sing them together. In our Sunday school, as Brother Don was uh, giving the closing prayer, he was praying for all of you all and all of us that the Lord would help us to be enthusiastic, to be filled with joy, to celebrate. And he used a whole bunch of other adjectives to communicate the idea. Help us, Lord, to have a party, to have a party in your truth. Help us to not receive it as just mundane Christian dogma, but as truth and to celebrate it in our souls. And so these Christmas carols, they are more than just songs that are familiar melodies. They lay down some heavy theology and some truth. I was listening as we were singing, uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing in the last verse. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. And then the unspeakable joy, Joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Amen. That's what we, that's what we got, y'all. That's what we got. It's not just words. It is the truth. And so I am excited about uh, the blessing of being able to share with you this morning's message, which appropriately is titled, Peter brings the hype. Peter brings the hype for the gospel. Peter brings the hype for the gospel. And hype as a noun, it means uh, extravagant or intensive publicity or promotion. It doesn't necessarily mean it's exaggerated or that it's just intended to bring you in, but it doesn't deliver. No, hype as it is literally defined is extravagant or intensive publicity or promotion. And that's what we're looking at this morning, how Peter brings the hype. And I'd like you to turn in your Bibles with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And the word of the Lord says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world. Now, as I'm reading this, I want you to try to internalize the hype of what Peter is saying. And don't read it as just a dry text. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world. Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace 
and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, reserved in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. But these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Amen. Isn't that great? Thank you, Peter, for that hype. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for hyping him to hype us and to give us this glorious truth. If you're looking for a main idea, the main idea is believe the hype. Peter brings the hype of the gospel. The main idea, believe the hype. What did Pastor Dan talk about today? He talked from he brought the word from 1 Peter chapter 1 and he said Peter brings the hype for the gospel. And he encouraged all of us to believe the hype. Don't just read the the, the hype. Don't just hear the hype. Don't just know the hype. Believe the hype. Believe the words that we just read. And to help us we're going to go and break it down. We're going to go back through the text and we're going to break it down and take it in. And if you're taking notes, I'm going to assign numbers to the different phrases that we're going to break down so that we can look at, internalize, ingest together, digest, and appreciate fully the hype that we just read. The first point that you can write down comes from verse two and the phrase is sanctifying work of the spirit that we have been blessed by God with the Holy Spirit whose job is to sanctify us, to set us apart, to make us more like Christ. Yes, but help us to see the world as God sees it by the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to see beyond the seen and to see the unseen and to be able to internalize what we can't touch, taste, see, or feel, but we experience it as real because of the work of the, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, I wrote in my journal for nourishing me and for nurturing my faith from the beginning of my walk with you to this day. I am what I am because of the day by day, year by year, love and care you provided me through so many people over the years. I'm here because of the direct care from your spirit in the form of displays of your glory in nature, I'm wowed by nature, the insights that you have given me from your word, 
as Brother Dave was sharing, I had this reaction. What is this? The sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit operating by giving us insights into his word or inspiration for me, for songs that I wrote many years ago. Heart touches that come as we walk and talk with the Lord are out of nowhere, sometimes unexpectedly, where our hearts are touched by the Holy Spirit and our joy is released. And maybe it's triggered by a song that you happen to sing, that you happen to be singing, and you've sung this song a thousand times. But for some reason, that particular phrase in that moment touches my heart. Or just a, a memory, a reminder. Heart touches from the Holy Spirit. And timely and creative reminders, things that we know but have forgotten. And the Lord brings them back and they're fresh. All of that is the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Or for me, like the day so long ago that I still remember that uh, I was determined to be discouraged. I had a bad day. And it was an unspeakably bad day. And I felt like I had earned my discouragement. And, and, and I knew that the Lord wanted me to rejoice always. And I knew that that was the better position to take. But I had earned this discouragement and I was going to fully enjoy it. I was going to marinate in it and I was going to sit there and I wasn't going to lift a finger. I don't want to lift a finger to remove it. And I'm driving along and the Lord have to, had a garbage truck pull out in front of me, and there was a scripture verse on the back of the garbage truck. Your heavenly Father knows what you need before you ask. As if that wasn't enough, I turned off and I turned on the radio, and it happened to be on Christian radio, and I never listened to Christian radio, but somehow it was on Christian radio, and the guy who was speaking was reading the scripture, and he says, look at the birds of the air. They don't toil or spin, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And why are you anxious? And he went all the way through Matthew 6. And it was like he was speaking right to me. And I turned off the radio, and I said, you got me. Okay. Okay. I don't need any more. Thank you. I got the message. But that's the, the, the creative, sanctifying work of the Spirit doing what he does. And so Peter says that we've been chosen and that we have been blessed with the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And so with thankfulness, Lord, to your past faithfulness, I will receive whatever you provide for me today as my daily bread. I'm thankful for all you've done in my life to prove to me that you are not just my imagination running away with me. <laughs> I'm thankful for how you continue to reinforce my faith in you as the living one who was dead and is now alive forevermore. So the Lord is at work in us, sanctifying us by his spirit. And I just want to say to all of you, the Lord has an impressive rest of your life planned for you. The Lord has an impressive, we talked about Jesus, I'm impressed last week. The Lord has an impressive rest of your life planned for you. And you can wake up every day with joyful anticipation that through the power of the Holy Spirit, he is going to continue to remind you of who he is, to remind you of who you are, and continue to unfold his plans before you day by day. He may not give you a map, but day by day, step by step, he will open your eyes 
and open your heart to see the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit at work in you, not just in the world, but at work in you personally. Number two, great mercy. The hype involves God's great mercy, which led to new birth. Great mercy, which led to new birth. As tomorrow approaches, as this coming week unfolds before you, realize this. From the standpoint of your relationship with the Lord, from God's perspective and from God's heart, there is nothing but love escorting you into the week to come. Nothing but love, nothing but mercy, nothing but God's affection for you escorting you into this coming week. And there will be nothing as you come out of it, regardless of how it transpires no matter what happens Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday or Saturday coming out of this week that is ahead of you is nothing but love the love of God for you the affection of God for you he's at work in you he's at work around you and he is trying to impress upon you the depth of his mercy and love. You know, it was mercy that brought you to Christ. It was mercy. It wasn't goodness. It wasn't your goodness. <laughs> it, was, it was mercy before you knew him. It was love when you weren't even thinking about him. And so now that you belong to him, how could it be anything less? When, if he would take you at your worst yes. <laughs> and you weren't even trying to be your best, <laughs> how much more does his love enfold and encompass you? Nothing going in but love, nothing but coming out. And then it says, because of his great mercy, new birth happened to you. That's what happened to you when you said yes to Jesus. New birth. In our Bible study, one of the things, when we talked about last Thursday, I told you that we were going to spend our entire time talking about how you can be certain that you are certain that you have eternal life. And one of the things we looked at is one of the points that we looked at is that because when you said yes to Jesus, you didn't just take an oath of office. You didn't just make a promise to do something. When you came to Jesus, you believed something. And upon belief, you became something. You became something different. You became something that you were not prior to that belief. The scripture says that you were given new birth. That's what Peter just told us, that you were brought into a new birth. You were born into a completely different person. You were born, reborn, a child, a son, a daughter of the living God. It also says that you became a new creature. And one of the reasons why you can be certain that your profession of faith in Christ is eternal is because once you have become something new you can't go back and be what you were the, you, a, a butterfly cannot go back to being a caterpillar as I said in the thing a butterfly can he can fly all over the place and be crazy he can be misguided he can think he's a bird he can do whatever he wants but he's still a butterfly and you have become a new creature in Christ upon faith, upon your faith and your profession of faith in him. So new birth coming from mercy. Number three, an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That's reserved in heaven for you. This is like nothing you've ever seen before. 
You know why? Because there's nothing on earth that can't perish, spoil, or fade. What on earth? What on earth is there that can't perish, spoil, or fade? Nothing. But that's what's reserved for you in heaven. Believe the hype. That is what awaits you, Sister Mary. And it's reserved for you. Her name is on it. Her new name. Maybe your old name, but maybe your new name. But it's reserved especially for you in heaven. It's kept there. It's just a matter of time before you show up to receive it. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. An inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. In Luke 16, 20, the story is told, Jesus tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And he says, the rich man died and he went to Hades. The poor man, Lazarus, went up and was in Abraham's bosom, which is a phrase for heaven. It says the angels carried him. So I believe that because the Lord doesn't say this is a parable, he's telling a story, I believe that is what happens when we die. When we die, I believe the angels escort us into glory because that's what happened with uh, Lazarus. The angel says the angels carried him to the bosom of Abraham. It says in Hebrews 1 that the angels are ministering spirits that are sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. So it seems logical to me that if they're serving me here on earth, as the Lord has told us he, they are, then certainly when we make that transition from life, from, di from this life into the next one, why not? Why wouldn't it be that the angels would be there to escort us? So I call it angel airlines. And when I think about that trip, I say to myself, you know what? There is no coach on Angel Airlines. Oh, no, it's first class for everybody. And so that is what our destiny is. And I asked you last week, I asked a couple weeks ago, how many of you are absolutely certain that when Angel Airlines comes and takes you, to glory that you're actually going to get on that plane that you have no doubt getting on. Let me see your hands. <laughs> <I'm la> <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because at Bible study, we went over this so thoroughly. I said, okay, when I asked that question on Sunday, I want to see your hands shoot up like a rocket. So everyone who was in Bible study last week, before I even got the question out, they were like, <laughs> oh, but that's, you know, it's, it's not a fantasy. It's not our imagination. Peter is not telling us some story. He's giving us the true deal. He's giving us the hype of what we have received through the gospel. And he wants us to believe the hype, as you shall see. He wants us to believe it. And then he says in verse 6 and 7, this is, verse, this is number 4, verses 6 and 7, trials. Thank you, Jesus. You've had to suffer some trials, various trials. And it says that these have happened. Why do they happen? To prove something. To prove that your faith is genuine. October 15th. No, 25th. 2015. I remember the date. I remember the day. My brother, my friend, my fellow elder, Brother Jim, standing here speaking on Pastor's Appreciation Day. And as he began, 
suddenly he became immobilized and he and he stood here frozen and we didn't know what was going on my wife got up and hopped up here and miss evelyn his wife came up and started trying to help do what we could Laverne led us in prayer we called the 911 and the ambulance was here in just a few minutes and they carried brother Jim out I visited him visited him later that day in the hospital and I want to say I want to stop here and I want to say brother Jim just wave your hand right there brother just hold your hand up right there And I want to tell you what, what he said, what he said. And, and you can talk to him. What, talk, talk to me about that. Oh, he'll love to tell you. He'll love to talk to you. Love to talk to you about that day. Because you know what he said in the final analysis after sorting everything out and going through all of that? He said, as they were taking me out, I was okay. I was looking around and I was like, I'm okay. I'm good. And then, if you talk to him further, his assessment of that situation lines up perfectly with what this says. Because he says, it proved that what I believe is real. It proved that what I believe is, I said to myself, now I know I believe that. It had that exact effect on him. You see, when it says that your faith may be proven, it's not proving it to God. God knows it already. It's proving it to you. It's proving it to you. It's like a rope that is untested, hasn't been proven. The only way you know that rope is going to hold is if you fall off of something and it's holding on to you. So these trials prove the genuineness of your faith and the faithfulness of the one in whom your faith has been placed. And that is why some of y'all are out here today is because that rope held you. Because you fell and that rope held you. And you realize that what I've got is real. And this is not just my imagination running away with me. There is a God. And my faith in him has been strengthened through this. Oh, I know, I know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> and I know you know I'm talking, what I'm talking about. These have happened. It's not that God caused them. Because some of this has the evil one mixed in it. We have an enemy who is trying to destroy us. Who is trying to discourage us. Who is trying to defeat us. But like we looked at in Sunday school, he means it for evil. But God means it for good he wants you to see what you got <laughs> he wants you to know what you got and the only way you know what you got is when it's tested then you know you got something that's how it becomes your favorite fishing reel I didn't pull some big ones in on it. Give me that one right over there. It's all chipped up, broken up, but it has held and it has been tested. And you know it can be relied upon. And so it is with your faith when it's been tested and it's been proven through the fires. You know it's authentic. As Brother Jim said, I know what I believe now is real. If we believe God knows us better than we know ourselves, and we say that all the time, don't we? Lord, you know me better than I know myself. If we believe God loves us 
more than we love ourselves. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Doesn't it follow that he will do a better job caring for us than we can for ourselves? If he loves me better than me, if he knows me better than me, then doesn't it follow that he would do a much better job caring for me better than me? And if that's true, doesn't it also make sense to trust him when he handles our requests differently than we would handle them? Or on a different timetable than we would. Doesn't that make sense? You know me better than I know myself. You love me more than I love myself. And so, Lord, I believe that you are caring for me better than I know myself and better than I can care for myself. I believe that your will is the best of all possible outcomes for me. Hear what I said? Yes. I believe your will is the best of all possible outcomes for me, even if and even when it is contrary to my desires and plans. It's a little more silent in here now. I've got my plans, Lord. And you know my heart. And you know my desires. And some of the things I want, I know they're noble things. Some of the things I'm praying about, I know are things that I see in your word that they please you. So I am making these plans in a holy place. I'm not making these plans out of selfishness and arrogance and just uh, you know, any kind of malice towards anybody. These are, these are good plans. So I'm asking you to bless them. These are things that I want you know. I want you know why I want them. So bless my plans. And I'm going to trust you for what I want. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to put my trust in you for what I want. But I'm going to thank you for what I get. I'm going to thank you for what I get because here are my plans and here are your plans and where they diverge, I want yours. Where they diverge, I want yours. And then number five, though you have not seen him, <laughs> you love him. Early this morning, it hit me. I do love him. I love Jesus. It's not religion. You know what? It's not even just relationship. Because relationships can go up and down. It's not just relationship. What I have for Jesus is love. I love him. Your affirmations, and many of you have blessed me with little notes and speaking to me after Sunday services and emails and text messages. And Pastor, that just really blessed me. Thank you for just, I mean, just effusive and I so appreciate it. Don't ever think I don't need your encouragement. I do. I appreciate it. Now, I don't want to be bombarded after this morning's message with text messages from all y'all. But I'm just saying that here's the thing I want you to think about. My heart is in love with Jesus. And what I am sharing from this place is coming from a heart that is in love with Jesus. And it is about Jesus. And if it is resonating with you, guess what? You love Jesus. That's why it matters to you. That's why it's ministering to you. Because you love Jesus. Your affirmation is more about what Jesus is doing in you 
than it is about what I'm sharing from here. Because if you weren't where you were or where you are, what I'm sharing up here about Jesus, you wouldn't want to hear it. Why do you want to hear a message that is so Jesus soaked? <laughs> why? Why are you attracted to that? You know why? Because the Holy Spirit has worked in you and has opened your eyes to see the magnificence of our Savior and has given you an appetite for more. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is why. I had a long talk with someone not too long ago who was just effusive and said, I am so happy that I have the opportunity now to fellowship with people who love Jesus like me. <laughs> Jesus lovers. See, Jesus, and, 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 it, and it's a big love. It could be overwhelming. But he has the time. No other human has the time. For all the love you want to give sometimes, all the love you're feeling. He has the time and he has the capacity to be able to absorb all of that without being worn out. Without being saturated. And he has the desire to receive all that love. You know why? Because he's the one who prompted it. He loves us. We love him because he first loved us. You see, he, <laughs> we love because he first loved us. And he has loved us, the scripture says, with an everlasting love, an everlasting love. And he has loved us with a love that is beyond human knowledge. So whatever I, he knows more about love, he has forgotten more about love than I'll ever know. He loves infinitely beyond human capacity and even human knowledge. So it's not unrequited love. It's not love that goes into a vacuum. It is love that is received and embraced. And I love Jesus. And I finally came to that conclusion. I mean, I knew it. But then, you know, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. No, this is really what's going on with you. When you're walking around saying, I don't know what's to become of me, you're in love. That's what it is. You are in love with Jesus. The reason why you're writing all the time is because you're in love with Jesus. Even though you don't see him, you love him. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate all that you've been to me this year. And you've been a lot to me. You've been a lot to me this year. And I thank you. I appreciate who you've been to me this year and what you have done to make yourself in my heart both the deepest satisfaction of my soul and his deepest longing at the same time. That's what he is. He is my deepest satisfaction and my deepest longing at the same time. And the Lord's love for you, brothers and sisters, is like a, it's like a buffet that extends all the way into infinity and tables on either side. No waiting in line. Enough to accommodate anybody. Enough to accommodate everybody. No need to push, shove, rush. No need to compare. It's a buffet that extends as far as you can see. Tables everywhere with his delights on them. <laughs> All healthy and delicious. Doesn't matter how many people are calling upon you, Lord. I'm one of them. Doesn't matter how many people are going into the buffet with their plates. I'm one of them. And you're all welcome. 
and you're all personally served. There's plenty to, go, plenty to go around. And that's why Matthew 6 was such a blessing for me to remember. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. To depict how big, how vast, how incredibly comprehensive, all-inclusive is God's care for each one of us. It's not like a popular restaurant where you go and they give you a buzzer and you gotta wait. No, 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 this is a buffet that extends as far as the eye can see and even farther and wide and filled up and you can go anytime. It's 24 <laughs> seven. 365. And when all and when time is no more, it just says eternity. Open for all eternity. And literally, this is what the scripture tells us awaits us. Is that throughout all of eternity, the Lord will be revealing, exposing, will be sharing with us his grace in kindness in Jesus Christ. You believe in him and you are filled. This is six. You're filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. This is the last point. You believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Can I tell you something? After 40 years of service as a pastor, I recognize that What's most important to me is not what the Lord has done through me, but what the Lord has become to me. My joy is inexpressible, and it is glorious. I write, I sing, I teach, I preach. And I still can't tell it all. <laughs> I still feel like I'm fumbling. I, feel so, I still feel so inadequate. I feel like I didn't really say it all. And when will I learn I can't say it all? When will I learn I can't frame it in the right way to really convey what all of it is? And what I have to offer the world is the fruit of that relationship with him. Whatever that may be. Whatever that may be. Because that's my greatest gift to the world, is what he chooses to do with me. It's not what I choose to do for him. It's what he chooses to do with the life that he's given me and the relationship and the love that we have. It's what he wants to do with us, me and him, because ultimately that's our goal. We have as our ambition not to do great things for God. We have as our ambition to be pleasing to him. We are bearing fruit for God. If you abide in me, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me, he who abides in me, bears much fruit, much fruit. That doesn't necessarily mean spectacular, all kinds of numbers. It's about the fruit for him. What fruit does he want? I am his fruit tree. And the fruit is for him. And he does with it whatever he wants. The gospel is good news, brothers and sisters. It's good news. Peter brought the hype. Believe the hype. I'm done.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand with us so we can sing again. Joy, unspeakable joy. joy. Lord, we thank you. You are the source of our unspeakable joy. Lord, you've given us many things on earth to enjoy. You've given us things. You've given us relationships. Lord, you've given us adventures. You've given us the capacity to be able to experience pleasure on this earth. It comes from you. You've given us all things to enjoy, your word says. So you acknowledge, you recognize our humanness and that these bodies also desire things that are material on this earth. You've not deprived us of that. And yet, Lord, you've also enlightened us that you are the source and that without all of that, we still can have unspeakable joy because you are the personification of it. You are the, the inventor, the creator 
of joy. It all comes from you. And so, Lord, as we leave this place, we want to ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to remind us of the portions of this morning's message and our worship that are most relevant to where we are. That, Lord, that you would, by your Holy Spirit, remind us and reinforce our faith in you through the things that have passed between us during this time. And now may the love of God, the unspeakable, unimaginable, unfathomable love of God, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each of us now and forever. Let us all say amen. 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 And God bless you. Next Friday at 7 o'clock, our Vesper service.